Happy birthday, Bitcoin! 12 years have passed since October 31st, 2008. On that date, a pseudonymous entity known as Satoshi Nakamoto published a paper called Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. The paper set the theoretical framework for a new form of money that would be fully decentralized and censorship resistant. The identity of Satoshi Nakamoto remains a mystery to this day. Still, few people have played a more significant role in the creation of Bitcoin than Professor Adam Beck. Adam is the inventor of Hashcash, the proof-of-work system used in Bitcoin mining. He is also reportedly one of the few people ever directly contacted by Satoshi Nakamoto himself. His name was even mentioned in the Bitcoin white paper. For Bitcoin's birthday, we asked Adam to bring us back in time to the years where Bitcoin's roots were founded. Well, to get started, you'll need to get connected to the internet. You do that through an internet service provider. An internet service provider? What's that? The origins of Bitcoin trace back to the 90s, when Adam Beck was a member of the cypherpunk movement. It was a group of hackers, programmers and geeks that used cryptography as a tool to protect people's privacy from government surveillance. Typically, there were regulations and rules providing rights to privacy that were, you know, created um, over hundreds of years and started to get eroded by the online world. And the Cypherpunk's viewpoint was if you wanted privacy rights, you should build technology to obtain them. You know, if you have these rights, you have to assert them, otherwise you will uh, lose them. Web privacy, email privacy, and electronic cash was a, was a big one. That was kind of the holy grail application that was much more challenging to achieve. Back then, the public use of cryptography was heavily regulated. The US government even imposed a ban on the export of this technology. As a way to protest against these restrictions, Adam Beck started promoting t-shirts with cryptographic code written on them. And so there were t-shirts, there were tattoos, people were using it to, uh, as a signature, you know, at the bottom of their email, saying, oh, this is not exportable, but of course they're exporting it while they do it. Ah, uh, you can get a Macintosh laser pointer, sure. Mm. It's called the uh, Apple laser. Mm. The cypherpunks dreamt of creating a new form of internet money that could evade government control. In May 1997, Adam Beck invented Hashcash, one of the earliest proof-of-work systems. It is used to limit email spam and DDoS attacks by requiring a certain amount of computational power to be sent along with each email. This makes it unprofitable and difficult to send large amounts of emails. Who would have thought that the precursor to decentralized digital money was actually a frustrated response to spam emails? The spam didn't look like it had a commercial value. They were not advertising anything. They were just sending you know, big blobs of random numbers. So we think they were doing it because they didn't like privacy and they wanted to frustrate and annoy the system. You know, what's the real problem here? The real problem is it's free. There's no cost. If there was a cost, you know, people would think economically about whether it made sense to send a message. You know, it was a fascinating thing because you could, in fact, it turns out, create a cost even though there wouldn't be a reusable value. Email, I heard that's really neat. My cousin has a pen pal in Sweden and they write back and forth and it transmits right away and doesn't cost anything. Despite its name, Hashcash is still far from being a functioning electronic cash system. The value of transactions cannot be reused by the recipient. It is essentially a one-way street. Still, the proof-of-work system deployed by Back became the founding principle of cryptocurrency mining. Proof-of-work became an interesting and important building block indirectly, you know, a system to create value by individuals directly mining coins. So you didn't need a, um, a partnership with a bank to move value into the system. The internet is revolutionizing business from egghead.com to eBay. After Hashcash, other prototypes of digital money were invented, such as Wei Dai's Bcash and the Nick Zabo's Bitgold. Eventually, only Satoshi Nakamoto found a way to transform the proof-of-work concept into a fully trustless digital cash system. Previous electronic cash systems were central servers and uh, you had to trust the server to some extent. And so Satoshi, I think one of the clever things that Satoshi invented in the, in the Bitcoin system is use, reusing the proof-of-work as well for you know, bringing new coins into creation and processing transactions in arbitrating this race condition, which, which basically allows the system to be decentralized and self-sustaining. So, you know, if one person leaves, another person can join. So the system has this kind of, you know, fabric uh, property that 
uh, it just keeps operating without any central plan. The invention of Bitcoin represents a milestone in the evolution of currency. That is why the 31st of October is a day worth celebrating for more than just Halloween. Actually, it is rather curious that Satoshi specifically chose Halloween to release Bitcoin's white paper. We would love to hear your theories on that decision in the comments below. Still, the journey towards the democratization of money doesn't end with Bitcoin. On one side, governments and big corporations still seek to impose control on cryptocurrencies. On the other, privacy advocates look for increasingly sophisticated ways to hide transactions from undesired third parties. We will further delve into this long-lasting struggle around privacy and money in our upcoming documentary about the history of cryptography. So stay tuned for more Cointelegraph content. Cointelegraph. Like, subscribe and hodl.